Hello everyone, and welcome to my The Young and the Restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. On today's episode of The Young and the Restless, Tucker answers an odd call from Ashley, and Martin takes Alan's position while Ashley begins to remember things. She's determined to stay up as long as she can at Ashley's Paris apartment. Alan mentions that Tracy has fallen asleep and compliments her for her assistance. Ashley describes her sister as having intense affection and loyalty. Alan thinks highly of her. He is concerned that Ashley may grow weary. She can't risk going to sleep and the altar is taking over since she's determined to finish this. Alan contends that it is simpler for them to seize control the weaker she is. Ash is concerned that it might occur at any time and is unsure of when she will regain control. Although they can now identify it, Alan claims that the altars could appear at any time. Compared to when they started this process, she is obviously stronger. Ashley is unaware of the initial reason for their appearance. Alan acknowledges that they must learn about the trauma, yet every memory brings them closer. Ashley acknowledges that she's scared to learn. Ashley declines Alan's request for her to relax once more. Alan says he's concerned about what they'll discover and that Martin is a dangerous man, that he should return to his life in this manner. Considering how dangerous Martin can be, it makes sense to suspect that he is the source of your trauma. He expresses regret for placing her in this predicament. Ashley desires to discuss it further. It's merely empty. How can I recall more? Alan appears hesitant when he suggests they attempt hypnosis. Is he worried that they're going too quickly? Ashley queries. It is not without risk, Alan cautions. Ash believes they have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Please, now let's get started. She needs to sleep, Alan says, but he'll hypnotize her nonetheless. They're hoping for some responses. He advises her to begin by taking deep, steady breaths. She will have to picture herself traveling to a serene, safe area as he counts backwards from ten. Alan asks her to attempt to imagine and describe the bar where she met Martin. She claims that music is playing and that everyone is having fun. Thinking he would enjoy it, she summons him to come for a glass of wine. Alan wonders what happened when Martin joined her, and Tracy comes and observes in silence. Ashley remembers catching up and raising a glass to their friendship. She discussed Tucker and her marriage with him. It was cozy. I inquired if he would like another sip of wine. Ashley is unable to recall what transpired next. She remembers suddenly that Martin whispered something in her ear. She is asked to concentrate solely on Martin's words by Alan. I'd like you to see my new artwork, she recollects. I believe that would be entertaining to you. I remember, screams Ashley. She awakens from the trance thanks to Alan. Ashley explains to them that he intended to show her an artwork. After he paid the bill, they departed. She is adamant that they visit Alan's townhouse. She will recall the remainder there. Tracy worries, but Ashley says she will be all right. When Tucker leaves a message on his voicemail, Ashley discovers that he ran into Alan and didn't recognize him. Alan claims he never saw her after she tells him. Was it Martin? Ashley wonders. Tucker gets a call from Ashley asking where he saw Alan. That was on the Rue de Marc. Tucker tells her. He glanced into his eyes as if he didn't recognize him. Is she okay? Does she need help? He asks. Ashley tells him he's incorrect and claims she's okay, adding that he didn't run into Alan. She disconnects, telling him to leave her alone and concentrate on Blissade. Ashley becomes agitated and informs Alan and Tracy that Tucker encountered Martin. The fact that Alan has been looking for him for two years astounds him. Tracy proposes they end their talk since she feels disturbed about what Tucker said. Ashley must see this through to the end. Martin poses a risk to himself and others if he is not taking his medications, according to Alan, but she must take care of herself. Ashley thinks she must take action right away. When Alan, Ashley, and Tracy arrive at his townhouse, he inquires as to whether anything resonates or appears familiar. Ashley recognizes the painting Martin intended for her to view. She requests another hypnotization from Alan. Alan protests, naturally, 
They all just strive to recall. Ashley remembers curled up on the couch. After Martin brought some brandies, they continued to chat. She yells, what was that? When she hears a disturbance as she visualizes them on the couch, Alan is unsure. It is not supposed to be crowded. He looks into it. Head held by Tracy. She can't picture how Ashley is feeling without sleep, and her nerves are frazzled. Ashley merely wants to concentrate. Tracy affirms her strength and bravery. I'm simply amazed. With her, Ashley could not accomplish this. They talk about how devoted and helpful Alan is. Ashley feels a chill as she turns to face the painting. Something changed. The voices aren't as distinct and loud as they used to be, and she feels a buzzing sensation in her mind. They determine she must be growing more powerful. Ashley first glances at the painting, then the couch. She remembers Martin telling her that Tucker was a narcissist and didn't deserve a second opportunity. Martin, posing as Alan, is irritated and believes Ashley is too intriguing a subject to be held back by such a man. Ashley recalls protecting Tucker. Ashley questions whether he is psychoanalyzing her after being offended. Anne reappears in the present, missing his coat and vest, and reports that Martin and everything else are nowhere to be found. When Ashley shares her memories with him, he claims Martin grew fixated on the way he was handling his patients. His brother thought he understood the psychology of people better than he did. Tracy finds this unbelievable. Alan acknowledges that he started to doubt the way he handled his patients and thinks perhaps he ought to have paid more attention to Martin. Martin, he experienced firsthand what I could only see in my patients. He believes that rather than ruling him, he ought to have shown him the way forward. He treated him badly, and it cost him. Alan is being too hard on himself. Ashley says him, We're here for you, so, what happened after he said you were a subject? Alan asks, Ashley claims it's simply a mist. Anne wishes to give hypnosis another go. Tracy is perplexed. He only said previously that it might be dangerous for her. Ashley gives in and says it's okay. Ashley remembers, while in hypnosis, that Martin told her to apply his knowledge. In order for her to react and defend herself, he wishes to stage the altercation she had with Tucker. Ashley scowls. Martin believes she deserves better, therefore he wants her to see the confrontation for what it was. Let's alter the tone. Replicate the altercation. We're going to give you the power this time. As Ashley awakens from her trance, Tracy observes that she is trembling. Alan wants to know what went wrong. She claims that although Martin pushed her to reenact the confrontation with Tucker, she declined. Ashley claims she won't quit, but Tracy wants to. She is unable to. Tracy objects. She's tired, but she knows Ashley is incredibly curious to discover the truth. Ashley says she's okay. Tracy and her argue all the time. Give all you've learned some thought. Wouldn't that be healthier, Alan? Tracy's viewpoint is respected by Alan, but they must go forward. You can trust that she is in excellent care. Tracy gives in. Ashley is asked by Alan to try and recall what transpired with Martin after that. Ashley is hypnotized by him once more when all of a sudden Miss Abbott appears in her mind, telling her to stop. She is very feeble and lacks experience in her field. The only one who can accept the reality is her. Ashley grimaces at the idea of her alter ego gaining control. Alan cautions her not to allow it to occur. Miss Abbott begs you to allow her to assist you. Allow me to assume control. It's the soul path. Ashley feels helpless to stop her. Only she can see this through. Alan continues encouraging her to fight. He's lying to you, the altar says. Pay attention to me. Please let me go. No, groans Ashley. Alan tells her it's going well. It indicates that she is drawing nearer to the truth. She isn't afraid, but others are. She is no longer in need of them. Ashley believes they vanished. What do you remember happening after that? Alan asks her, pressing her to think deeply. Ashley gives a frustrated shake of her head. Alan requests that Tracy brew a pot of strong coffee for them. Coffee? Now! Snorts Tracy. Ashley is begged to quit, but she is a dement that she must get the answers. 
Tucker wonders what's going on as he mulls over his bizarre phone conversation with Ashley in his suite. He looks at his watch, picks up his coat, and walks out. He cautions them at Alan's house not to lose steam. Tracy Ashley can be distracted right now even by a supportive and loving sister. Ashley can be hindered by her sheer existence. Tracy leaves the room, knowing that Ashley is confident of this. The altar wants to stop Alan as he tries to brainwash her. Alan rants about how they can't stop them from moving forward. She is told not to listen to him by the altars. I don't need you to protect me, shouts Ashley. Just leave, please. Ashley tells Alan she's purchased some time, but she's not sure how long when the altar goes. Alan says they must move forward now. She didn't want to repeat the debate with Tucker as Martin asked her to. He thinks they should act it out that evening. As they approach the sofa, Alan instructs her to close her eyes and inhale deeply. Let's revisit that evening. Martin, she recalled, had told her that this was the only way to resolve her disagreement with her husband. I'll be the Tucker. You just talk to me the same way you talk to him. Tucker, I know we were planning on building a company together, but I can't just back away from my family, replies Ashley in agreement. She is reminded of Martin's anger by the way he kicked the chair and threw the wine glass. Ashley says, but he didn't, shaking her head. Martin advises her to see the underlying anger rather than just what she initially perceived. Tucker desired to discipline her. Ashley visualizes Tucker hurling the chair and the wine glass. This is where we change the narrative, Martin remarks to Ashley. She needs to assert her authority before regaining it. She's powerful and attractive, he says, putting his hand on her shoulder. Until now, Tucker was unaware of what he possessed. I am able to be your Tucker. An improved rendition, he will provide for all of her needs and wants. Ashley was flashing to see Tucker's expression as Martin went in for a kiss. Ashley informs Alan that she mixed Tucker with Martin, who was violent in the present. And then what happened? Queries Alan. Ashley is unaware. It is entirely blank. It's a wall. She questions whether the altars intervened at that point to keep her safe, but they did so to keep her safe from Tucker rather than Martin. Well done, Alan adds with a smile. I knew I was capable of it. Do what? asks Ashley. Crack the code, he commands. Work out the puzzle. He laughs that his brother believed he knew everything, played God and gave his patients the impression that he was the expert. But my knowledge was superior. I'm the expert and you helped me demonstrate it. Ashley queries, what proves? He claims she will become his favorite topic if she manages to figure it out. Ashley scoffs, saying, you're Martin. He grabs her as she gets up to run, he covers her lips as she cries. On the young and the restless, Ashley uncovers something startling, and Tucker decides to take matters into his own hands. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.